Right. Uh, welcome. My name is Tommy. I work at Spotify. Um, we're usually having talks about scalability and uh, fun things you can do with, with uh, uh, backend servers. Um, I'm getting a bit tired talking about that, so I thought, why not talk about fun instead? Why not talk about um, Python? So I'm sorry I stole the from import from, from the Python conference. Uh, I didn't mean to. Um, but I'm here to talk about fun. Um, um, by fun, I don't mean stuff that's amusing or just about list comprehensions. Um, it's it's when you're doing something that could be beautiful or or, or magic and probably not clever, um, and you you get the feeling of ah oh, right, this is why I'm using language X in this case Python. Uh, there you go. A few notes. So, one example. How many of you have used a, uh, one of the micro web frameworks like Flask, Ball, Eddy, uh, Web.py? Um, if you use the, the decorators in there to route, uh, route messages, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. No. When, you, when you just feel that, nice, the language actually supports my work. <coughs> so, um, who am I? Uh, I joined Spotify as a backend developer in uh, 2007. Uh, I basically learned Python from scratch uh, back then. Uh, I was a C, C++, Java student uh, with doing a bit of show scripting and, and orc. Uh, and I had sort of looked at Python, but basically not at all. So, um, I started out with Debian, which is what Spotify is using for the backend services. So we were on, on uh, Python 2.4. We're now up on Python 2.6, uh, waiting for the next Debian release to actually give us 2.7 or whatever. Um, we also decided early on to go with Twisted for, for uh, as an IO framework, uh, a decision we regret uh, that who have used Twisted. Um, it's kind of interesting to, to build code backwards. But I'll get back to that. Um, so what about Spotify? In 2006, uh, two guys founded this. Uh, this guy over here is actually uh, a previous CEO, very technical guy. He's the CEO now. Um, and the other one is uh, Martin, he's a uh, founder, he's got lots of money and uh, a vision. So what you need to start a startup? Well, you need money and a vision, and most importantly a vision. And both of these guys had a vision about music. So in 2007 I joined. Uh, the tech team in 2006 was like seven people or something. Um, I joined and we started a, a public beta, and uh, I'm sorry, a private beta. Uh, just with a mock-up. Uh, very, very rudimentary client and an HTTP back protocol, no encryption or, or DRM or anything. Uh, a year later, we launched in, uh, in Sweden and Finland and, and uh, a few other markets. Um, and we sort of went ahead and, and wanted to build a scalable system that we could grow rapidly. So in 2009, we, we created Lib Spotify, uh, which is an API, uh, a C API to do stuff with Spotify without using the uh, desktop client. Um, and that was, well, I think it was a product of uh, Spotify having techies. Uh, it's a, a very tech-driven company, and I don't think it had happened without the tech incentives and the hack days. So in 2007, um, was kind of a, a boring year. Uh, we launched a uh, um, subscription um, subscription model called Unlimited, which was a, a bit cheaper uh, at five euros instead of ten. Uh, but we also launched a number of embedded uh, services um, like uh, the Sonos uh, home theater systems. And in 2011, uh, we actually managed to launch in the U.S. after a lot of uh, 
licensing discussions. So um, Spotify, the, the tech side of Spotify is around 100, uh, 100 engineers, including operations and uh, the HR team. Uh, we have roughly 15 tech teams working in scrum groups and in uh, uh, functional teams. Uh, they are mostly in Stockholm. We have one team in Gothenburg and we have one team in New York. So <coughs> basically everyone is in this office and uh, it's getting a bit crowded so uh, we're actually moving to a new office in, in a year. Uh, hoping that would be, uh, um, that's actually going to be created for us. So that's kind of cool. Uh, right. So what, about, what is fun? Uh, and don't take this as a, a, as a truth. Um, I'm not here to talk about truths. Truths. I'm here to talk about feelings. So um, take this as a definition for this talk. I think that, that fun is when the syntax of the language doesn't get in the way. So in, in Python we have a few examples. You have the, the star R's uh, for, for doing proxy functions. I don't know how many times I've used that, but it's a lot. Uh, we have higher order functions, of course. Uh, anyone who hasn't passed around functions as return values? No, I think so. Uh, and of course decorators and, and context managers. I, I think those are um, what makes Python special uh, and, and why I keep using Python. So an example of this would be, you know, you, you, or an analogy uh, would be going to the supermarket and there's no line, right? You just shop what you want and pay for it and that's it. Um, or you're having an exam and, and uh, the, uh, you know the subject since you were five or, or something. And you just, it, it, it comes with a flow, you know, you just sit there, you code, you, 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 you don't think about anything, you don't have to care about syntax, you don't have to look up the standard library because it's, it's either so simple or, or intuitive, um, or you can work around it and, and just feel the, the flow. And I think that's, the, the flow is, is the good feeling you always strive for when, you, when you're coding. And I think that's uh, kind of important for me as a, as a developer, of course, I'm here as a representative for Spotify, but personally, I, I prefer, you know, fun uh, ahead of, of being collected. Um, there is a backside of this, and this is an example I, I usually pick if anyone coding Perl here. So, uh, how many does not know what this means in Perl? Good. Um, I usually ask this question on interviews because I think it's so hilarious. I, I found it in a source code on GitHub. Um, and it's at, at the top of the file, and of course it means um, disable output buffering. Uh, you're setting the variable dollar pipe to something non-zero. Uh, it works until you have 4 billion files that does this. Um, and, and I think I, I have a colleague who actually found a similar thing in Python. Uh, of course, the A arrow B is valid in Python, uh, and he is a, a Haskell guy, and he wanted a, a non node library. Uh, and he found one, and he used this. And I'll leave us an exercise to, to implement this if you want to in your, in your monad using programs. Um, all right, so uh, this is not a Petri dish. Uh, we're not into biology at Spotify. Um, this is a diagram of the software projects we have at Spotify. So the, the red ones are Python projects, and the size, the area of the circles, is the number of lines of code. So uh, we actually have a, a very light green here, which is the client, and it's written in C++. Um, I don't really know why it's so big. That it's, it's the biggest project we have. Uh, down here we have a PHP, which happens to be a website. I actually think that the, the reason this one is so big is because we have lots of test cases with auto-generated PHP code, so um, I don't really count that as, as uh, code. 
Uh, we have a bit of Java up here, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I made it this very light for a reason. Uh, let's come go come back to that. But we have Java up here and Java here, and then we have C++. I think this is the iPhone client, and this is uh, the access point, which is it does encryption and authentication in the back end. Uh, so, given this, I'd say that y you can spot two things. Uh, one, we're using a lot of Python, but in different th this each circle is a Git repository. So um, we're using Py a lot of Python in different Git repositories. And well, I'd say that the, the number of lines of Python code is actually less than, than the rest, which is hmm, kind of interesting. But on the next slide, I sort of skew this. So if the last if the last diagram was a web scale, this is log scale. Uh, you have the, the area of the uh, circles uh, are the log of uh, the number of lines. So this basically shows the number of projects. And if you scale it up like this and, and ignore the fact that you can write a lot of Python code in uh, a lot of less lines, um, you end up with this. And over the half of the, the uh, software Git repositories at, at Spotify are actually Python projects, <coughs> meaning they contain mostly Python code. They may contain some shell scripts or, or some some Java thing there, but it's mostly uh, mostly Python code. So um, one reason for this, I joined Spotify half a year after the first techie started, and rather than we had a client and uh, a backend, uh, it's been rewritten in large parts now, but we had it, and the reason we started using Python was because it's fun, uh, and because people knew it and wanted to continue working with it. And like I said, this was Python 2.4, and, and a lot of fun has been added. Um, I, I, for one, really like the context managers. Um, I'm a bit sad that not every standard library component is, is up to speed on the context manager, uh, but I'm hoping we'll get there with, when Debian catches up on the Python community. <laughs> so um, the important thing here, I think, is that given a lot of Python, you have uh, no static type checking. Uh, you can do really horrible stuff. I'm going to show you a few of the worst code samples I found in the Spotify code base. Um, but I think you have to stock up with some empathy uh, when you're writing Python. I think you have to, um, you know, check beforehand: is this going to be maintainable? Uh, is anyone going to be able to read this um, when I quit? Will will anyone take over this, or will they just say, "Oh, this is uh, Charles' code. Uh, let's not let's not bother. Let's rewrite it instead." Um, and I think that goes for for a lot of languages, but especially languages that are so dynamic uh, as Python is. And it's, it depends on who you are as a coder. I mean, if you have a lot of freedom and, and you like to experiment, I think you need more empathy than if you're either restricted or you don't have a, a lot of um, um, interest in experimenting. So um, I have a stock photo. I'm actually building a library of stock photos. So. Um, this one is a client developer, and this one <coughs> worked, uh, the playlist system at Spotify. Um, and I think that when the guy writing the backend playlist system has to comfort the, the, the client, client, client guy, uh, I think that you lost empathy somewhere on the way. Um, and you might have had too much freedom. So when you need three Hollywood actors to write the system, you're probably also on the wrong on the wrong side. And this is a code example on of playlist three. And if you break this down, this is twi <coughs> twisted code for those who don't recognize it. Um, you have two nested lambdas um, and a function invocation. This seems rather obvious, right? Uh, let, let's delay. It's a sleep. And then there's a retry, which probably means that we're going to do the same thing again. Uh, and this code was probably fun at the start. And then someone added a lambda. 
Uh, and then someone thought, hey, we need retries, and added another lambda. And this is the reason why we stopped using Twisted, uh, because you keep adding lambdas, or you keep adding uh, callbacks in infinite uh, indentation levels. And, well, it's not really maintainable. Um, and from now on, we're using, uh, from, we're using Gevent, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Greenlet library, uh, allows us to basically write this as, as you know, straight imperative code instead. Uh, and it, the readability goes up way, way. Much. How many have used Twisted but stopped using Twisted? Right. Even Nick, who's actually a Spotify guy, that's, that's good. So, uh, I have another one. Uh, these are, this one is actually one of the original techies. Um, and when you have a lot of freedom, I think it's important that you, you limit the, number, the amount of fun. And I'm going to give you a small scale of uh, what fun is. Uh, I think that down here it's boring. Uh, you don't want to be there because you're not going to write code that's interesting. You're not going to write code that's good. You, you're just going to write what someone else tells you to write or oh, basically not have fun at work. So in this reading, I think it, it, you can actually find beautiful code. You know, when you hit the, the, the limit that says huh, I got enough freedom to write the code the way I want it. I, I can write a module here, I can go into this system here owned by you know, a, a guy in Gothenburg. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I can do this because my code will become beautiful if I just change one line in his code. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think you should have, as a developer, you should definitely have the freedom uh, of, of at least writing beautiful code. Otherwise, you won't be stay long at that company. There is a next level, and uh, the level I'm most in interested in. It's the magic level. Uh, I think that's that's one level above beautiful when you feel that, yay, I'm actually using the language the way it's supposed to be used. I'm using star args to, to pass arguments on. I, I'm using it to not force the the uh, the, uh, the implementer of a function to uh, to to take care of all the arguments and. I'm using context manager because I don't want to spread the code in two places to, to do cleanups. Uh, and all of that, and you just get a, a warm, fuzzy feeling, like my, uh, one of my lecturers used to say. Uh, and there's the, the, the top line where I think you've gotten too much freedom. Uh, and that's Clever Code. And like I said, I, I don't consider Clever Code fun. Uh, it's, you usually look like, like, like this when you write Clever Code, and you're usually more than one. Uh, and of course, the guy sitting in the back here is just, mm hmm. <laughs> right. I know where this is going. I've been here before and I'm actually fixing a system right now that's been clever. Um, and that's actually where empathy and, and freedom has to match somehow. You have to, you know, the, the business diagram X charts, you have to, to, to be in the spot where, where you don't use too much empathy because then you're. you're you're a coward, <laughs> and you can't use too much freedom because then the, the guy in the back here will, well, not laugh with you, but at you. Um, and at Spotify, we try to, to make sure that uh, you have the freedom so you can choose, uh, but of course, we also want the empathic coders that can find this border where magic turns to clever. So, um, <laughs> This one, I think this is pretty beautiful. Um, it's called XMLify, and I think you can understand what it does. It's creating a DOM tree, and then you pack it. And of course, this is a lot more maintainable and, and uh, easier to syntax check than writing and concatenating XML strings. Um, there is also this one, and I really, really like this one in Python. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't use dict here, but having some kind of variable where you just want to generate the wrapper and perhaps even not generating the constructor to save fields. I really like this. And for rapid prototyping, I think it's, it's awesome uh, that you don't have to care about it. Um, 
sometimes I build a base class that does this for me. And I, I consider this somewhat magic, and this one uh, beautiful. And I owe that all to Python. And I'm really glad that I stopped using uh, stopped using shell scripts for everything, uh, and especially for string parsing. Um, try to split the string in bash and uh, <laughs> sort of get annoyed. And then we have the uh, the slightly magic ones, you know, the un the zip function that is actually also the unzip function. Um, I would very much like a function called unzip, uh, or else you just have this comment that I don't find very beautiful. Uh, this code isn't self-explanatory, and uh, I think it's on the border of clever, uh, but probably just in magic. And of course, we have this this nice or and construct. Someone felt that, huh, an if-else statement here is, is too much. Let's do it as an expression. And of course, this was Python 2.4, so um, didn't have much choice but to use the old or and. And actually, this is my code. Sorry about that. Um, so. At Spotify, uh, we have code since 2006, and we have Python code since 2006. And I think we actually have less than 1 million lines of Python code, and I think we have in excess of 1 million lines of, of the, the other codes. And as, as you saw in the, uh, in, the, in the diagram, we actually have a lot, a lot of, of, of uh, Python projects, and each of these projects is either a shared library that has an API, or it's a network service like um, the browse service mapping uh, track IDs to, to artist metadata or, or track metadata. Um, and when you have code that's five years old, um, you tend to think, oh, I don't want to touch this code anymore. Uh, because one, it's going to be twisted, uh, and two, it's going to be twisted. Uh, and We've seen a few examples from the Playlist 3 service, which is the old Playlist service, still in, in production, but we're facing it out. <coughs> um, and that's the kind of system, it's actually implementing subversion. Uh, and the client is sending patches, and the, the backend service is merging patches. Um, and it differs from subversion in that we have actually uh, unique merging rules for, for all the cases. So if you add a song, delete a song, or move a song, uh, they are, you can merge the operations, um, and <laughs> the the guy who wrote it is into darks and patch theory, so uh, that's why we did that. Um, it's it's really nice because we can offload a lot of things from the uh, playlist system, but it also means someone has to maintain this code, and, and the code is growing. Uh, we want to add features like ACLs. We want to add pictures for 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 the playlist. We want to add descriptions for the playlist. Um, and at some point, you just have to realize that it's time to do a rewrite. And in this case, we actually rewrote it in Java uh, because we needed the CPU. So in, in general, we are pretty happy with having uh, having stuff in, in Python because, well, you have the GIL. Uh, and the GIL actually forces you to think in modules. Uh, you can't use more than one core, uh, or you'll get heavy contention. Uh, well, you can, but not if you want to actually use CPUs. So instead you fork one process per per, uh, per core or per disk or, or whatever you're, you're contending on. Um, and of course that really generalizes to moving to, to different machines as well. So in some sense the, the Python, the, the, the limiting factor of the Python interpreter uh, or the version, Python virtual machine has probably helped us building a more modular backend. Um, and well, that together with being, you know, fun and having nice syntax, I think that's that's a great trade-off. Um, one last thing, um, <coughs> I am now a team lead uh, for the backend infrastructure team, a team of seven, uh, building shared components, and I'm actually doing a lot of interviews, and. Uh, one thing I want to tell you about interviews is have fun. 
Yes, we are using whiteboard code. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but it's wh when you interview, you want to see two things. One, does does the candidate have the technical knowledge? You know, just the basic facts. Can you shift the number 15 uh, a number of steps and, and tell me what the answer is? Um, um, do you know what what the um, uh, what a for loop is? Do you know what the uh, complexity of um, binary searches. You know, the, the, the basic fact side. But you also want to see how does this this uh, program handle the code? Is it maintainable? Um, can we discuss about the documentation? Um, unit tests, test system tests, uh, integration tests. There are a lot of things that as soon as you start writing code on, on the board, you actually get leads into what else am I interested in knowing? So, uh, we do actually do coding on the board here. And if you're using, if you're used to Python, if you tell me that, hey, I'm a Python coder, and you just write a, a boring code on the board, I will probably say you're nervous. If you start writing something fun on the board, like using decorators or saying, hey, in the real life, I'll we'll use a, a with statement here, or um, um, I'm using an, an if expression. Uh, I would have more to go on. So the more fun you have at an interview, the easier it is for me as an interviewer to, to actually check this out and, and uh, to see who you are. <coughs> so uh, I have my my last code samples here. And this is Flask. And I guess uh, the other micro frameworks are sort of the same. Uh, I think this one is is part magic, part beautiful. Uh, you're telling it to, to route the, the slash to the function index. Uh, and the uh, the uh, the rest of the code is just instantiating an app class, and the rest is, is just you know using the decorators. I think that's a neat thing. Um, and we're thinking we'll use a Scala a bit. And uh, it's, it's um, not really using decorators in the same way Python is, and that's unfortunate. Uh, then we have this one. Uh, so if this, one, this was beautiful, I'd say this one is uh, a bit abusing. So uh, this one is trying to destructure uh, um, a dict into A and B. Uh, and of course, you don't want to use uh, strings, because that's too tedious to write. So let's abuse the syntax by, by creating a function that returns an object where you can you use uh, the get after override to actually extract the, the dicts in here. Uh, you can do this in Python. Uh, and uh, we had a long email thread at work uh, discussing how do you do the structuring of dicts in Python. Um, and this is one way. And I think this is neat uh, for Python programmers that know Python well. Uh, when you're new to Python, you think, huh, this is really clever. Uh, and that's a bad feeling. Uh, so I think the guy we talked with actually implemented this. Uh, and if not, I implemented this before this uh, talk, uh, just to see it working. Uh, and it does. Uh, and I think it's horrible. All right. Uh, what's even more horrible is this one. Uh, and when used beautiful soup, the HTML parsing library. Um, I think that's a great library because you, you don't have to write that much code to parse HTML. And since HTML is often broken, uh, parsing it is very tedious. So uh, the, the first line here, I think it's rather neat. You know, Let's find the table element. Let's extract the TR, the TD. But then it gets um, a bit weird. <coughs> this string here is not an element. It's a keyword. So you're actually mixing namespaces. You're mixing the HTML element namespace with uh, the built-in stuff in, in Beautiful Soup library. So how does a, a newbie programmer come to my program? Um, in this case, it's actually a script to handle our invoicing system because it's written in ASP and very poorly written in ASP. Uh, and I tried to make a Python library so you can interact with it from the command line. Um, 
And I started using this, and now I just feel, huh, I can't really hand this over to anyone because <laughs> no one's going to understand that string is a keyword in keyword in um, beautiful soup. So I, well, I think the the uh, the idea of parsing is great. Uh, this one is actually only using the uh, the namespace for please, uh, and this one's mixing, and I think that's stepping over the line to clever. So all in all. Have empathy, for God's sake, when you write Python code. Um, and I'm not saying this as a, as a Spotify representative only. I'm saying this as an open source developer and, and being fond of reading code at, at GitHub or Bitbucket or, or <coughs> Google Code or whatever. Um, and there's a wise man in uh, Lord of the Rings saying, you shall not pass. Um, and I think that's true even for the uh, magic clever border. If you do that, I don't want to work with you. <coughs> so um, be, empath be empathic. Right. So um, at Spotify, we try to be empathic. And though we're trying to have fun, we're still thinking ahead. Uh, we're five years old, which is nothing in the software world uh, nowadays. I mean. <coughs> Should it be a, be at least 30 years old to to be a company, right? Uh, with code from 2006, we really have to have empathy, and um, we have enough backend projects that you can actually work at Spotify and only see Python code. Uh, you probably don't because most of the guys working at Spotify really love to to you know do different things, having fun in different languages. Um, like shell script for, for some, uh, and uh, Python for some, and even Java. Uh, I also have two guys in my team who's actually been coding Scala professionally, and I'm, that's way cool. They're trying to get us to code more more Scala. So, um, in essence, have fun. And I'm going to end this talk by, by doing some PR. Uh, these are the guys who are here from Spotify. And since we're a sponsor and I had the first talk, uh, I get to, to talk a bit more about us. So uh, this is Nick. Uh, he's a backend coder like me. Uh, this is Dennis. Uh, he's a uh, tools coder. So he's he's working on the uh, infrastructure. I'm working on the infrastructure in the backend, so production systems. And Dennis is working on the infrastructure for developers, which is kind of neat. They are both new teams, uh, but needed when you grow. Uh, and this is Nick. Uh, he's a technical recruiter. Uh, he's sitting in the back trying to take pictures. Um, and this is me. Uh, and we're going to be here. Uh, we're going to try to retreat some of you. Uh, don't feel offended. Uh, we are also here because we love Python and we want to learn more. And since we're still on 2.6, uh, we really want to know what's new in Python 2.7 or even 3. Um, I, for one, know the unit test module has a lot more assertions nowadays. Um, that's cool. Too bad I can't use them. So, thank you. Any question, anyone? Sorry, I missed it. What, what you are using instead of Twisted? Uh, Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yes, sure. Uh, the question was what we're using instead of Twisted. And uh, we're using Givint. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a library by Dennis Pilenko, I think his name is. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice library. It's um, basically coroutines in, in Python. Uh, and you don't get contended on the guild. Uh, it's cooperative multi-threading. So basically, you can write the same code as in, in Twisted, but you do it like it was threads instead, but without the, the uh, overhead of primitive thread. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I would like to thank you. So we have a, I hope you drink coffee. We have a local uh, roasters coffee for you. That's what it's Thank you. 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 Thank you.